Langchain just released a new developer platform called Langsmith that allows you to monitor, debug, and test and evaluate your large language models. For those of you guys that have been tinkering around in this space, you understand how important something like this is, how vital it is, and there's a lot of kind of tools and documentation of creating your large language models, but nothing really to, um, no tools to assist kind of once your um, models in production, right? There's nothing really to evaluate. It's kind of, it's sort of kind of like this black box that, um, you know, we don't really understand what's, what's going on or how we can tweak it other than just say, you know, maybe trying different prompts in the sandbox or logging some uh, some of the responses. So in this video, we're actually going to take a look at getting set up with this, what Langsmith's capable of, uh, some different use cases of it, and uh, yeah, just how easy it is to get set up. And I think something like this is really going to change the game. And one thing really quick before we get in this video, um, they are in currently in closed beta. I signed up with an account um, a couple weeks back and they just gave me access as of recent. I imagine they're going to start rolling this out pretty quickly, but they're um, documentation is currently released. I highly recommend you guys, um, even if you don't have access, you go and look through it just to um, get a better understanding of what it's capable of, um, the different use cases. So I think the easiest way to um, show you guys how, what Langsmith is capable of is show you guys kind of how it works. And once, you're, once you've been um, given access to their platform, you just want to come and create a new project. We'll just call this um, test Langsmith, and then um, it's going to take us to our setup and installation. You can really see here that all we need to do is just set up these values in our environment variables. So I've gone ahead and just created a quick Jupyter um, um, notebook example. Well, we're going to look at another example here, but we essentially want to add these values. You can see I've added them here as environment variables. Um, so we'll just add our project name, Tess Langsmith here, um, as well as our API key, which we will come and generate here. Um, so you can create an account uh, API key here. We'll just paste that there. And then um, this will be deleted as well by the time this video is up. So uh, don't get any funny ideas there. But once we have that, um, added you can see we just have a simple chat model we're just going to say hello world um oh sorry i have to go ahead and add my in my open ai key so i've gone ahead and did that and then we're just going to go ahead and run this hello world you can see we got a response how can i assist you today and if we come back into our um, traces we can go ahead and um, see our response here it's pretty cool and of course obviously this was just a um, you know, very simple request response chat here. We can see um, the latency as well as the total number of tokens it used, which again is really cool. And obviously, um, again, this may not seem that intuitive and helpful here, but if we have more kind of complex chains, as we'll look at in other examples, such as the use of agents and um, maybe even open AI functions or um, simple retrieval methods, we can see um, just how impactful this this is going to be kind of the way that this is set up is it essentially just kind of runs in the background as traces you can see um, so anytime your uh, language models are queried or uh, called within your application they're just going to be outputted here so let's actually go ahead and open this up and we can see kind of the input that we had here as well as the AI response and we can go ahead and rate it Kind of give it some human intervention yes or no um, as well as um, you can add your own data sets which which we'll look at later i'm not going to go too in depth on that but something cool i wanted to show you guys as well is um, you can even open it in your own playground and again you might see oh this this might not be as useful but again is you know as we kind of chain our prompt templates together with user input and um, the use of agents um, you can see just how useful this would be. You do have to add in your OpenAI API key, but um, once you do that, you can go ahead and just edit it and query it, um, change the model temperature, just as we just as we'd see as um, you know working in um, OpenAI's playground. So now that I have this repo pulled up here on the left-hand side, up and running over here, uh, this is just a simple web scraper. 
Um, we're connecting to SERP API. Again, just SERPs the web. Uh, we just went ahead and made a backend endpoint. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth tutorial of how this was built, we actually have a video of this. Um, I'll include it in one of the tiles above. But um, but yeah, we want to follow the same exact convention as we did before. So come into Langsmith and then just uh, come and create a new project. We'll call this SERP agent uh, test as we did before. And then again, guys, same exact convention. We can see um, we'll load up uh, TypeScript here. Simply add in our project name, the API key. We already have the endpoint added and then any other environment variables that are required to um, obviously make a project run. So, so now that that's been added, I restarted my uh, local server. We'll just go ahead and ask it something like, who is the current president of the United States? And what's their weight? I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what uh, it returns us here. Um, so we're asking it, and then we should be able to see this. Oops, sorry, that was our last example. If we come back into projects, we should be able to see this um, get correctly traced. So there we go. Um, our agent executor, let's go ahead and click into this. Yeah, so you can see this was obviously a uh, more complex chain, and that's just the nature of how we set this up uh, with our API. but. Um, which actually, it'll probably be easier just to go ahead and show you guys um, how that was. If we come into our um, back end here, you can see that we're using these set of format instructions, and it's essentially a loop of a um, you know user asks a question, it thinks about what what to do, then it takes the following action, observes it, um, has a thought if they know the final answer, and if they don't, it essentially just keeps running the loop over and over again, which is what we're kind of seeing here in this chain. Um, you can see, we'll just go ahead and um, go through it. So the user, me, asks who's the current president of the United States, and then um, as the input, and then you can see it kind of observes what to do next, and then um, uses the search action, which we've declared here in our back end. Um, I should search for the current president of the United States in their weight. And then um, it does a search using the API. You can see it didn't really find anything. So it's just gonna go ahead and um, ask it again until it does find the valid um, result that we're looking for. So we can see the current president um, is Joe Biden. And then um, we can see it asks, um, it should do, it does a search specifically on Joe Biden's weight to probably get a more uh, conclusive result back and throughout this whole process we can see the of course the latency of each step um, as well as the tokens it used the prompt tokens as well as the completion tokens it used and um, I don't know for me this is very helpful especially um, you know just seeing kind of the whole um, process of everything the actual prompt template you can see this is what's really being entered in um, so we kind of if you guys look we we, the, the, in this chain, we have the prefix along with the format instructions, uh, the agent scratch pad, the tools. Again, I'm not going to go in depth of how this works, but you can see that it gives us a more kind of um, high level, clear result of what's really going on, um, which of course you could log some of these things, but just kind of having it in this graphical interface makes it a ton easier. And um, you can see if we just come down to the bottom here, it finds us or it kind of knows the final answer and that's when it returns us back um, to the uh, in our interface in the front end and what's really cool as well uh, is you can actually share this um, so you know with your fellow colleagues or uh, your team if you're developing applications um, just so you can they can get a better idea of where results or where you know errors and other bugs are happening so yeah, guys, that is um, Langsmith in a nutshell. There's a whole lot else you can do um, that I didn't touch on in this video, such as add different tags um, so you can better kind of organize your traces. And again, this, this kind of lives um, beneath your language model. It's kind of running behind the scenes the whole time, anytime queries are um, requested. And aside from that, guys, one thing that I didn't even touch on is 
the addition of adding your own data sets and testing. And from this, you can essentially um, select different evaluators to, um, you know, to, to base the results off of, such as um, the conciseness, relevance. You can even add your own custom evaluators, uh, which I think is really cool. And I haven't done too much testing on this, but um, you know, Langsmith is something that we're actively integrating into all our projects now that we have access into all our projects as well as our clients um, to you know actively gain feedback on it and um, you know iteratively, iteratively uh, develop on the model as we as we get kind of more feedback once the app is in production. So yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this, let me know if you want more uh, tutorials on Langsmith, more in-depth tutorials. Um, such as maybe we test uh, with dif different evaluators, add different data sets. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.